So, my plan was to walk over here and make a video on that super awesome palm tree right there. Then, on the way to that palm tree, I got just stopped in my tracks by my diorama. And I thought, yeah, maybe the world needs to know about my diorama. This is such a great plant, and you can see uh, Mr. B likes it too. Thank you for coming on cue. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm out uh, chilling. I just kind of woke up, walking around the garden in the morning, and uh, that explains my nakedness. I figure it's okay to be naked in the garden, you know. It's like such a natural thing. But I'm not totally naked, so you know. Got some shorts on. I want to freak you out. But uh, I didn't necessarily put a shirt on. I didn't know I was going to make a video out here. I'm too lazy to go get one. The lighting's really good. Lighting's really good on days like this, guys. If you want to take garden photography, look. Look at the sky. You can get the most beautiful swirls. And the swirls up there will give you a little bit of... Um, a little bit of... Uh, you filter, you know, you get this beautiful filter of light. And look at the swirls in the sky. You want still photography for gardens. Boom. I mean, how can you, how can you beat that? Look at that. Imagine if that was a photo. Anyway, <clears throat> just a tip. Uh, so, as you can see, I have a mustache. <laughs> it's a little bit of a story. I had a big spider bite right here. It was like huge. Didn't want to shave. It's gone for a week on a trip. Came home. My wife's like, I was like, I'm shaving. And she uh, said, no, you need a mustache. We're going to an 80s party. So I dressed up as a football jock with a big old um, mullet <laughs> and a mustache. And it worked really well. People were pretty convinced. But anyway, that's why I have a mustache. It's going to go away. Don't worry. I know it's scary looking. Let's talk about colia uh, <laughs> of diorama here. And uh, there it is. It's a native plant from South Africa. This has been in my garden for quite a while, and uh, they are nearly indestructible. Um, remember how I tell you to do as I say and not as I do? This is a really good example. So my garden, you know, I take care of a lot of gardens and plant stuff for people, and I come home, I just want to chill, and uh, I need to get in here. See all this dead stuff? You need to get in here and just cut the whole thing down to the ground and then it'll come up all brand new and beautiful. But if you don't do that for 15 years, this is what you end up with. Um, this is what the plant would look like in habitat. So I tell people, you want to see what plants look like in habitat? Come to my house, because I demonstrate how they look in habitat. They're still beautiful, but uh, you know, they're pretty shaggy. Um, so this plant, it's, uh, it's July right now. It's getting toward the end of its bloom period. Uh, the, uh, this particular, one here has pretty good color for, uh, for this type of uh, species. And um, very drought tolerant. It's a wonderful cut flower. And you can see how long these uh, flower stalks are. They, I mean, this is like seven feet high. You know, but, and then when it bends over, you know, so you can like cut that way back. You could have huge flower arrangements for a wedding. Um, you know, if you pick these at the right time, probably like in June would be good because see what's happening right now. Even when they're finishing flowering and they're making their seeds, they're still really pretty. Um, it's just a different cool textural thing. And this one's totally finished. These are the seeds that are coming out. But even that there would be a beautiful arrangement. And I bet you that would last a long time because you could probably dry that. Uh, but you can see what, how that looks from a distance. Um, it's also called the fairy wand and, um, and the uh, fishing rod <laughs> uh, flower. I guess it looks like a fishing rod, right? You know, you're out fishing, yeah, you catch your fish. Um, <clears throat> there's another one over here that's just totally finished flowering and it has just the seed pods. And like I said, I will do nothing. <laughs> this plant will just kind of do whatever it's going to do. Uh, but like I said, cutting it back is really good. Um, now, the seeds will actually naturalize. Look, we can find it growing down in here. There's one right there that sprouted. You really should divide these and sell them at the nursery. They're really wonderful plants. And, and look, there's one more. And you can see this one. That one's a lighter pink. Let's take this. So this is a seedling that happened over there. 
And as a seedling, it's gonna have a different genetic code. And uh, you can see the difference in color. See this? Let's see. Let's see if we can see the difference here. Yeah. So you can see the lighter one, this one, compared to the darker ones. So these things will come out in white, pink, and rich purple. Um, this one here is relatively purple and it has really good color. So if we wanted to replicate this plant, we actually could go down, dig down, and uh, divide the corms. They're corms, they're like these little round things that you dig up, that sends up the uh, plant. It's uh, in the iris family. And uh, that's how you divide it if you want to get the same plant. Or you simply can take these seeds like this and throw them around in your garden and uh, they'll likely sprout up. So that's that plant. And if you want to see the one I'm about to talk about next, the Cliff Indian date palm, then uh, we'll have to tune into that one. All right, thanks.